Welcome everybody to a very special crochet tutorial right here, right now. My name is Michael Selleck and I'm known online as Mikey from the Crochet Crowd and I literally have taught thousands of people on how to be able to crochet from the ground up. Now my friends over at Bernat.com have presented a brand new pattern that you've never seen before because it's in my hands and we're providing this pattern absolutely for free. Go in the description of this video, you'll find a link and you'll be able to get that pattern right there. If you're a very visual person, I'm doing the whole project right from start to finish on camera and you can also still click the link, print off the directions and just check it off as you go. Now, we're using the Bernat Super Value yarn, so it's inexpensive yarn. We're using three colors. We're using clay, deep straw and rouge. So now let's get working on this tutorial. today's tutorial we're going to be working on this mermaid purse and look at these fabulous colors. There is a combination of three colors of the Bernat Super Value yarn. We first of all start off with clay, then we move to deep straw, and then we move to rouge. And together these colors are really quite trending at this moment. What we have here is a crocodile stitch or a scale stitch, and then we move up then to single crochet, and then we're going to be working on this handle. So we're going to be working from the bottom, going to the middle, going to the top, and then finishing off with the flower. You're going to notice within this tutorial that the sealing of the bottom here is one of the last steps involved and you're going to be able to follow this right from start to finish with me right now. So let's now get started on this particular In today's project. tutorial we're going to be working with the Bernat Super Value yarn. We have right up here deep straw, we have clay, as well as we have rouge. They are 7 ounce ball, 197 grams. You should be able to find these in the stores near you. If not, you can always check out Bernat.com and order these products Finally, online. if you're looking for the pattern for this particular project, you can always look at the more information of this video. I put in a link so you can be able to find it. I normally print these things off when I'm actually at home and what I just do off camera in even on camera I just take my highlighter and just cross them off as they go therefore I never miss any stitches or any steps along the way so now let's get started on the beginning of this project Let's get started on this tutorial. I've chosen a five and a half millimeter crochet hook in order to work with it today. It's also a size H if you're looking for the US measurements. We're going to wrap it around our finger twice to start off with a slip knot and I'm going to pinch it down here as well as through the back. This is the back of my hand forward. I take the back, I move it forward, I take the new back and move it over the front and I'm going to slide in my hook. Now it says to chain 84, don't worry I'm not going to make you sit through 84, but I'm just going to get you started. So we're just going to rowboat back towards you and then through. So one, rowboat, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I want you to go all the way to 84. We're going to meet back up. Uh, also the rowboat action could be car uh, considered yarn over as well uh, in technical terms in technical terms just in case you know it that way. So I've just got you to go to 10 so go all the way to 84 we'll meet back up and we'll start on with the first one. So we're round. now back and what it's asking you to do is to slip stitch but you got to take care of not twisting the chain. So you just got to just look at it and make sure this chain is not going in circles and if it is we just want to straighten it out and it will make your life a lot easier when you go to slip stitch. We're just going to look at it and make sure and what we just need to do, once you know that it's not twisted up, you're just going to join it by just slipping in the hook in the front, like that, and just grabbing the material coming from the yarn ball, and join them together, just like that. So therefore you have your first one. So this is actually the base of the purse, this is actually the full circle, and eventually what's going to happen is that you're going to be using this line then to seal it shut at the bottom. So let's move on to your Moving next along, step. we now want to chain up three. So we're just going to begin that process. So chain up three. So one, two, and three. And we just want to continue now in the direction. So this is where we came from and we slip stitched it. So we want to go back in this direction here. And we want to be able to double crochet ourselves all across this chain. So we're just going to wrap and we're just going to go to the very next chain available like this. I want to seal off this little piece at the end so I'm just going to leave it on top of the line therefore it'll get trapped into position and we just want to double crochet ourselves as usual and so we're going to double crochet ourselves all the way on this line until we get back and we start coming back in this direction here where we're going to do another slip stitch and then we're going to begin to do the crocodile stitch 
on that at that particular point. So do that and we'll meet you back up and we'll keep you going. We're now all the way back and there is 84 double crochets on here and I actually I counted to make sure. So now before I slip stitch these together I want to make sure that this is not twisted up and you can see it's like a Mobius scarf right now. So one side just needs to be twisted so that it can just be all consistent. So I'm just looking for it. So this is the top, 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 top. Okay, let's turn it around. So we just want to make sure that it's like a sand belt, that it's all completely flat before I go to fasten it together. Because if not, you'll be in big trouble. So now we're just going to slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain that we started with. And call that step done. So now we're going to move up to your next step, which is round number two. And we're going to start now doing the crocodile, crocodile um, stitch, or the tears stitch, or whatever you want to call it. So let's do that next. I've just slip stitched and I'm ready to go and I'm going to create my first scale and the scale is going to go down the front post here so directly right above where we've slip stitched we're going to go down the scale or down this post and then we're going to come up the other post just like so so let's get started we're going to start off always when you're doing this when you start is chaining of one and I want to come around and we're going to do a front post double crochet five times so all I'm going to do just wrap the material or yarn and go underneath the post back with the other side, grab it, and we're just double crocheting around the post. And what's easier to do is if, if you just grab the, uh, the project like this, kind of fold it in half, and just work your way down like that. It's just much easier. So that was two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're now at the bottom of the scale, so we're always going to chain one, so regardless of what you're doing. And we, wanna come, we just want to turn this project again so that we're seeing the right post uh, next to it, and it's right there. And I just want to wrap the material, and I want to come in so that you're going toward the middle of the scale. Okay, that's how you do the crocodile or scale stitch. And you want to double crochet on the front post five times, and this is leading back up toward the top of the project. So that's four, and we have five. Okay, so there is your first scale done, just like there. So we have to always, when we get to the top of this part, we always chain one. So looking back down, we just kind of fold it in half. We want to count and get five posts away. So one, two, three, four, five. And what we want to do is that we want to crochet on the six one. So we want to skip all of the five in between and crochet on the six. So we're just going to, again, double crochet on the front post. I just kind of put in my hook so I can get it stabilized. And we're going to do front post double crochet again all the way down for five. Okay, and there's five all the way down, and once you're at the bottom, just like before, you want to chain one, and I want to turn the project, and I want to come up the other post that is directly right beside it. And again, I'm just turning the material so it's just easier to work with, and again, it's just around the post for five double crochets going up. So once you're back up at the top, you want to chain one again, and then reach over and skip five posts on the line or on the project, and then uh, attach yourself to the six. So now that I'm back at the top, I want to chain one. And again, we just want to fold it so we can count it. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the sixth one here and the seventh will be where the next scale is going to be. So continue that all the way around. We'll meet back up where we'll slip stitch and move on to your next level. Now that we're back all the way around, again at the top, we want to make sure that we chain one when we come across, and we want to slip stitch it to where you did the chaining of one here on the scale. We just want to go right in, like there, and that's exactly where we're going to slip stitch. So that is how you just finish off that particular rotation. The way that we move up when it comes to doing these rows is that this next section is going to be moving over so every time we do these scales we're actually going to be working on a diagonal so that they're in between each other so what we need to do is that we need to slip stitch ourselves all the way over to the middle of the next section way over here and how we do that is that we just go into the 
to a stitch there and then we just pull through and through and so we can even go in the center here it doesn't really matter and we just want to slip all the way to the middle section so we just go into each stitch and slip until we get to the middle one so there's actually five in a row so you'll just look for the third one you'll want to go in the third one just like I'm showing you here now and now we want to begin to chain up so let's chain up three so one two and three and we want to come back down into where we just started so right down in the bottom and we want to double crochet into that same spot and this is just uh, the center of the next scale so the next scale will then be drooping in between these other two sections here so when we're looking across that we want to make sure that we put two more double crochets in then we go into the center two more double crochets in and then we're back at the center piece where we're going to double it up again so let's begin to do that so we're just going to double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into the very next one okay and we're now in the center point so we just go right into the middle the whole section and now we've got to put two more double crochets on this side you'll notice that there's two lines so you want to make sure you stay on that back one in order to make this work okay and so we're putting two more in and now we should be back at the center point which we are so that one there is going to get two double crochets right in the same stitch and again that will be the center point for when we go up so that's all you have to do so you got to go one two center one two and then you'll be back at the center again and then you'll put two double crochets and you do that all the way around so do that and when we back up but when we go to move on to the next step Okay, we've come all the way back around and we're almost all the way back around and I'm just finishing up the final few stitches before we carry on to your next level. Now when you notice when we started we actually came right down into the beginning stitch. That means that this is a double, this is the center of the next one that will be drooping down in between. So just like we did before, we have to make sure that there's two double crochets on this side of this particular scale there. So we just want to go in there as normal. and we just want to slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain that we started with okay so just right at the top and we just want to pull everything together so that will complete that round there and this round really isn't shown it's just a behind the scenes as you just stabilize this entire pattern so now what we're going to do is move on to your next step Okay, we slip stitch and we're now ready for this next round the next one we are doing the scale again so the scales are going to fall directly in between where the other two scales are so it's going to loop down and how you can tell is that you can see that there's double crochets in the same stitch below right so there that's how you tell where the center points are when you're working around this particular round so to begin we have to chain one and we're going to come down the one post and up the other on the front side so it's front post double crochet we're just going to wrap the material or yarn and just go around the post inside the post so just come up and underneath and I'm just going to turn the material so it's easier for me to see as well as for you to see and I'm going to double crochet myself across for five so we're just working our way down the front post for five once we are now got our five in, we're going to chain one, and I just want to turn this project again. So just turn it so that I see the next post that's in the line, which is right here. And we're just going to wrap, and we're just going to go underneath the post like that toward the center of the scale. And we're going to work five double crochets going up the post instead. So one we come down the post, and the next one we come up the post. So once we get our five in, we can immediately just chain one. So we always chain one at the top of the scale. And then we can just look over and see where the next one is, where there's two stitches right in the same stitch, or two double crochets right into the same stitch. So we're going to come down the one and up the other. So again, just come in from the side like that. Once you get that in, you can just kindly turn your material to make it easier. Double crochet five times down, chain one at the bottom, 
and five double crochets up the next side and then chain one and then just reach over for the next middle of the scale that is over here. So continue that all the way around. We'll meet back up and we'll slip stitch and keep you moving. Okay, we're now back all the way around and now it's time to slip stitch again and we're going to slip stitch where we did the chaining of one here on the scale area. Just like there and we're just going to slip it and we're going to move along to your next step. So all you just need to do is that you need to have 13 of these scales going up the purse. Uh, they also have a measurement on the pattern if you wish as well. So this is one and two and so therefore we'll meet back up at the top of this purse when we start the edging where we're going to carry on with this pattern. To start off we're just going to chain one and remember how we were double crocheting ourselves all the way when we went around. This time we are just going to be following all of the double crochets that are underneath. Now you will notice that when you jumped over this area here you've always missed one. You want to you're going to want to capture every one of those stitches along the way. Okay including the middle piece. So we're just going to use the gray here or the clay color it's called and we just want to be able to secure a single crochet around the top edge so I'll meet you back up and we're gonna now finish off with this color make sure that when you go to single crochet you're not just grabbing this piece here you are grabbing the piece that's in behind um, because those uh, scales are oh, just won't be strong enough to hold your purse back together so make sure you are getting in behind as well okay and we'll see you in just a second and we'll keep moving along fasten off this color and then move on to your next I've now just finished coming all the way around and all I need to do now is slip stitch it to the beginning. Okay, So this doesn't determine just because we're slip stitching in the middle of the project because we have not sewed the bottom of it we're not we don't know which is going to be our sides yet and the bottom of it as I mentioned in the beginning of the video is the last thing to do anyway. So I'm going to just trim and I'm just going to pull up like that and I'm just going to tie this into a nice tight knot so just pulling my material through and just wrapping it I want to do that a couple times I don't want this to be very visible and the next color will bury it anyway so I can just kind of safely trim that a little bit shorter now but I'm just going to do the final trim later and now I want to get the deep straw color and I'm just going to create a slip knot to do that. And I want to show you something on the project before we begin because I'm going to show you what I did. I did a test sample and what we have here is that if you really look carefully at the sample you'll notice that there's actually three single crochets above each other. Okay so there's three here and this one three and this one three and they're stacked on top of each other. Okay like an apartment building. This one here what I did is that I did the three but I didn't stack them, I put them in between each and what it did is it changed its entire look to almost looking like a granny square versus this. So you could actually you know, have some creative allowance and change it if you want to if you like this look or this one but I'm going to show you how to do this one here because this one's pretty standard and uh, let's move along to that. Thanks. Now let's begin and my deep straw color is on the crochet hook. By the way you need to change the crochet hook size for this one. We were using a five and a half millimeter the entire time uh, and I've just switched it down now to a five millimeter. It calls for using a smaller needle. What we want to do is start off where we stopped and we're just going to slip our hook in okay, and just take your straggler and your string just throw it over and pull it through and through. So we're just going to pull it right through that slip knot. Okay, so it's now fastened on and we want to chain one. So we're going to chain one and we are going to put three single crochets into the same hole or into the same stitch. So just, oops, that was a double crochet. Don't wrap the material. I've been double crocheting this whole project so far. So just straight into the hole, grab the material through and pull through. In, pull through, pull through two, and pull through, pull through two. So we now have a combination of three on there. We want to skip the next two stitches in the line and go to the third one over and just immediately just single crochet for three more times into that same stitch. Okay, so you're seeing the pattern so far. So we're going to skip two, one, two, go to the third 
to immediately single crochet. And this looks really quite sharp, um, just how it just aligns this whole gray. So again, skip two, go to the third, three single crochets, and do that all the way around. We'll meet back up, or we'll move on to your next So step. I've come all the way back around, and now it's time for me to slip stitch where I started. And this is where what will make the difference of looking like the granny square idea like I just showed you before, or you want it to follow this exact pattern. If you want the granny square, all you have to do is just chain up one and just put three single crochets into this gap, and then you stretch over and then you get into the gap on the other side. On the other side, do your three, and then stretch over to the gap. That's how you would do that. But we're not going to do that on this uh, particular project. What I want you to do is that I need you to slip stitch to the center of this piece over here. So we're just going to go in, pull through, and through. That's a slip stitch. And then we're going to go into the next one, pull through, and through. And now we're going to chain one. And we're going to put in our three single crochets into that same hole now. Whoops, that's a double. <laughs> so one, two, and three, and this will cause it to stack on top of each other. So immediately when you look at it, you want to stretch over to the middle one of the next piece. Okay, so just right to the middle. That's the end. This is the middle. That's the, the end of the other side. So right into the middle, and we want to put in three single crochets in that spot. Okay, and then we just want to stretch over and again look for the next one which is in the middle and three single crochets. And what I need you to do now is that we're going to just, I'm going to take you back to the starting of this again. We're going to meet back up and then I'm going to show you again just one more time and then we're looking for about a two inch uh, distance on this particular band and uh, it actually looks really quite uh, sharp. Uh, when you're doing it. So let me uh, get you back to the beginning again. Just keep on going. I'll meet you back up. We'll, we'll do it one more time and then you're off on your own to finish the band. I've now just come all the way around again and I just want to slip stitch. So I'm over top of this one. The next one there is where we started. So we just want to slip stitch to the very beginning where we chained one in the very start of this row. Okay, I'm just going to stick it in, pull it through and through. And now, just like before, we need to move over so that we're on the middle piece here. So we're just going to slip stitch once and twice. Okay, and slip stitch it, chain one, and right again, right underneath is where we're going to be doing our three single crochets again. Okay, and then we're going to stretch. Just again, look for the middle of the next one. And you can see that they're just stacking on top of each other beautifully here. And just continue to do that and slip stitch and continue to do that until this band becomes around two inches. If you want it more, you can continue to do more. If you want it less, then stop earlier. But you're the artist. You can decide what you want for yourself. So continue that. We'll meet back up and we'll continue along with this project. Now I'm just finishing up here and I have my two inch banner as you can see and we are just finalizing and we are going to be finishing with this particular bag at the top end of it and again we're just using our three single crochets together in one stitch okay and then what we want to do and then slip stitch to where you started and we are now complete so we're going to finalize this off and we're going to make it real look real sharp. Get your fancy dancy scissors out. My Westcott scissors. Just cutting my string there. And I'm going to just pull up like that. And I'm going to just tie it shut. So I'm just going to slip in my hook into the stitch behind, grab the material, pull through. And then I grab the, the next material again and pull it through. And this will tie it onto itself. And then I'm just going to go to the very next stitch. Just pull it through. Just the next one again. Pulling it through. And then I'm going to just fasten it again one more time. And then pull through the next one. And 
and the next one. And that will be considered done and I'm just going to trim this nice and short. We can finalize that later. So therefore you would have your finished piece just like so. So now it's time to make the handle for this and you can tell that we have not even fastened off yet. Almost looks like a mini skirt at this particular point. And uh, let's do the handle next and keep on moving. Here we have the handle, and the handles are 18 inches long And before we're putting it onto the project. And you'll notice that the handles have a twist added to it. And the twist is happening because of the way that we're crocheting. So I haven't had to twist it in order to make it look like this. And I've left very generous pieces on the end so that I could tie this into the project in order to fasten it in so that we have some handles. Now, this is actually, you'll see two strings. This is because we're using two strings at one time. So instead of buying two different yarn balls, because you don't need a lot of this deep straw color, I just use the yarn that's wrapping around the outside, as well as I'm using the yarn from the inside to double up as I go. So we're going to start and off with about a two foot di distance, and we're going to create a slip knot. And go from there. So according to the directions, they want us to chain four. So this never counts as one, so one two, three, and four. And by the way, I'm using a six and a half millimeter crochet hook for this if you're interested. It's the highest size that I've used for this. I find it's a little bit easier. Now they're asking us to go from the second from the hook, we want to go in and draw the material up. So we're just going to go in, wrap the material, and pull up, and I'm going to pull a little slack on that. So now we're going to go to the very next one. We're just going to go in, wrap, and pull up. Okay. And then finally we're going to do it again for the last one. So in, wrap, and pull up. So now you have four groups here. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. If this was individual strings, there would only be four loops. So unusually, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to push the hook all the way through this way because the less handling I can do on this piece, the easiest it is. When I rotate now, I want to rotate it towards you. So I want you to rotate it clockwise. And just gently because you don't want these loops to fall out and once you're getting used to this product or project you're going to notice that it's actually very simple to do. I want you to slip in the hook now to the new one that's on this side and I want you to bypass the first two groups and go all the way to the end. Always starting on this is a little bit of a trick but once you get it started you'll see how easy it is. So now I want you to wrap the material and pull it just through this one only. And now, we're, instead of normally working from this way, we're going to actually work backwards toward us. So we're going to come on this one here. I'm going to go in and pull the material through that one only. And then finally we have the last one here and we're now just going to just manipulate it, put it on, and give it some slack. So the slack is where your trick is right here. So again, in order to less handling, okay, I want you to push the hook all the way through. See how they're all still in order? You, and I want you to turn this clockwise, slipping in your hook to the very first one, bypass the middle two groups, go to the end, wrap and through, go to the next one that is on the left hand side, wrap and through and then finally get the last one. That's all this is. So just wrap and through. So you end up with four groups back on your hook. Okay, so remember the secret. Just push through. Okay, rotate this clockwise. Going into the first one there, bypassing the two middle groups, going to the end, wrap and through and then we're going on to the left hand side one okay and then finally get the last one and this is causing the material to rotate onto itself And what's happened here is that I have left a straggling piece and I'm going to leave this, this should be actually classified as an outtake, but I want to leave it in because you don't want to do something like that. Okay, you want to make sure you get all the plies and not just the one. 
So I got them all now, and let's do it properly. So you can see that the twist is actually already starting to happen. So again, forward, rotate clockwise, going into the end, bypassing to the other end, wrapping through, now going to the one on the left, wrapping through, and then finally the very last one that's right in front, wrapping through. Okay, one last time, so push through, I'm going to speed up, end to end, wrapping, wrapping through, to the left, wrapping through, and to the one right left, that's on the, the only one that's left, wrapping through. And I want you to continue to do that until you get to 18 inches long, and what I would do is probably just measure it to the other one that you just did, just in case you were slightly off so that they're both the same size. So keep on going, and we'll, I'll just meet you back up when this is uh, at the 18 inch mark, and I'll show you what to do next. Well, in just a matter of minutes, my whole 18 inches is done, and I actually aligned it with my other one here so that I know that it's right. And I want to trim this string that's coming from it about, again, about two feet long. Don't be cheap. Leave yourself some extra space because we're going to use that to sew it to the purse. I want to now take this string and just pull it through all of the loops like that, and then I just want to grab onto it one more time and pull it through and pull everything through and that just tied a knot onto itself. So now we're ready uh, to move on to our next step. So then we're gonna put this aside for now. So now we're gonna begin to do the motif that's attached. You can't deny that it's absolutely gorgeous on it. It totally makes this bag incredible. And I did a test sample here with the Bernat Super Value yarn as well. We're gonna be doing okay, the Let's start off with the slip knot going around or using your Super Value coloring. We're using a five and a half uh, millimeter crochet hook. So we're gone back to the original size that I did the gray or the clay part. And we're gone back with that. If you go with the smaller one, the flower doesn't come out as large and it's probably not as desirable. So let's uh, begin with our slip knot, and it says to chain two. So this never counts as one. So one and two. And now it's saying to six single crochets, the second from the hook, which is the original one that we started with, and we're going to do six single crochets around the center. So we got one. We got two. Two. three, four, five, and six. And now it's saying to join with the beginning one that we started with, which we're just gonna do. We're just gonna slip stitch it to the beginning. And we need to do a really quick lesson on front and back loops, which I'll do right now. When you look at a stitch, you always see two strings. You see the one that's closest to you. So if you're looking at this one right here, you see the one that's closest to you. That is your front loop, and the one in behind is your back loop. And this flower uses both of these loops individually as you work your way around. So let's move on to your next level. And so we're now in round two and we're just going to chain up one. It says work on the front loops only one, one single crochet in the first single crochet, one half double crochet, two double crochet, and one half double crochet in the next, and then move back to one single crochet. So let's simplify that for you. Looking down, you'll see two loops, and it's harder to see at first, but it'll totally make sense to you. So there's actually two. So you do one and two. And we just want the very front one. We don't want both. Because we're on the next round from here, we're going to be using the one that's in the back. And so this is a little like operation just to get that front loop, just to get it started. Isn't it? get that front loop just to get it started is kind of a little bit of a pain. So the first one is going to get one single crochet and so then the next one that's available so there's the front there's the back 
so we just want the front only and it says one half double crochet two two double crochets one half so just wrap going into the front one only and we're pulling through all three because that's a half double crochet it says then to do two double crochets so we're going to do two double crochets into that same spot okay and that was one here comes the second and it says to finish it off with a half double crochet so wrap through and then pull through all three so now it's saying the next one is going to get a single crochet so just a front loop only single crochet and now the next one is going to get the same thing that we just did so we're going to wrap we're going to put two half or one half double crochet into the front loop only you should, you should see me beyond the camera I'm like concentrating like you wouldn't believe so we're going to put in two double crochets into that same one this flower is absolutely gorgeous probably the best flower I've ever seen done and finish it off with a half double crochet okay so the next one is going to get a single crochet in and then the last one here is going to get the half double one half double we're going to do two double crochets so hopefully you're seeing a pattern here and another half double and now it's saying in the directions do not join the three petals together and what we're doing actually we're going to be in this next layer we're going to be coming up underneath of it okay and using the other loops so what we're going to just do now is that we're going to chain one and we're looking at the back and now the back do you see this line that's kind of protruding upward right there that is where we're going to be working next and what we want to do is that we want to concentrate and those are the back loops of this particular project so let's start off but we're going to say two single crochets into each single crochet around well, that's pretty easy so let's just go into the very first one that you can find okay and we're going to put two single crochets into each one of the pieces so let's go in again So just move on to your next one, two single crochets. So you notice that when we started off, we had um, six as our number. By doing two double crochets, as it's indicating, it's telling you that you need to do, um, uh, it'll turn it to 12 in the end. So each one is going to get two single crochets. so what this is doing is on this round here is that we're building up on this flower so that the next layer can have something to grab onto and without this layer then you know you don't have anything to grab onto that's pretty easy this flower when I was originally doing it I thought it was pretty complicated at first but then the overall look if you just kind of pay attention you kind of just go with the flow of it it really is quite a beautiful flower um, it's probably the nicest flowers I've been able to make in my whole professional um, career so far. And we have another one there. Okay, so let's see where we are. And you can see that we've kind of come all the way full circle. And what it's saying at the end of this one is that we want to join it to the beginning. So this is where we, you can kind of see how it's folding over. So this is kind of when we went back over it. So we just want to kind of just slip stitch it together, just like this. So what's going to happen now is that this piece underneath is going to be the next layer that you will physically be able to see when we go around next. So we're going to begin again and we're just going to chain up one and again we're working with front and back loops again only so the front we're going to be rotating around okay and it's going to be this layer in behind and then we're going to come back on the next round and, and just finalize it off using the back loops so it's saying to start off with one single crochet in the first single crochet okay that's pretty simple and now the next one's saying one half double crochet two double crochet one half double crochet in the next and then one single crochet in the next so this is basically the same thing that we've just done in the front here so the next one front loop only is going to get one half double crochet two doubles so i'm going to speed up a little bit because i think you're understanding the pattern so two half doubles and then finish it off with the 
sorry, two doubles and then finish it off with a half double. So one half double, two doubles, one half double. The next one that's going to be available coming up to you is a single crochet. Okay, do you see how that's kind of like kind of, kind of going over? It's actually really doing a beautiful layering effect. So we're going to do the next one again. So it's going to be a half double to start. Two doubles. Okay, and a half double to finish. And now the next one is a single crochet. So just continue that all the way around. I don't think I need to show any more of that. Just continue that same process all the way around. We'll pick back up and we'll work on the back loops of the same layer. We're now ready to move up to your next level. And what we have here, if you're not sure if you're following this right, at this point, we should have three petals in the front here. This one we should have six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now it's saying two work on the remaining back loops of the third round. So two single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the next, two single crochet, and then one. So let's uh, move along. So we just want to flip this over, okay? And we just want to work in the back loops only. Okay, so we're just going to work in the back loops that we have. So we, what do we have? Two single crochets in the first that we have, and then it says one single crochet in the next. So to, again, just working in your the back loops. It's the only loop that you should be able to see anyway. So that's only going to get one. The next one is going to get two single crochets. And hopefully you're seeing the pattern. So this is again establishing the next round that we have. So that was two. So the next one is going to get a one. Continue that all the way around. We'll move back up uh, to the next level from that point. So we're now coming up to the end of that round and this is what we have and we just want to slip stitch it again to the to the beginning. So you can kind of see where you're stopping and starting with this particular project. Just kind of look down and you can see it clearly right in front of your face. So we're just going to slip stitch that. And now it says to work in the front loops only again. And the first one is going to get one single crochet. And this is going to be the same thing that we've been doing all along is that two half double or one half double, two doubles, and one half. Okay, and then you go single crochet and then the same thing. So just continue that all the way around again on this round using the front loop only and we'll meet back up and we'll do the next layer from that point. So one half double, two doubles, one half double, and then the next one is a single crochet again in the front loop only and then we just repeat what we just did and therefore we can continue to move up on this round. Okay, so we just come back all the way around and we don't want to slip stitch at anything but we just want to turn it over and now begin the back part of this work. So we're using now the back loops and you can see that these loops now are kind of standing out even more so it's getting easier and easier for you to be able to see that. So we're just going to start off with the first one and it says one single crochet in each, sorry, two single crochets in the first. I apologize about that. And then it says the next three will be single crochets. So let's just turn it over. So the next three will be one single crochet each. Let's go for the next one. Go for the next. Okay. And then two single crochets then into the next. Okay, and then one single crochet again in the next three, and then the next one will then have two single crochets, and continue to repeat that all the way around, and we'll meet back up, and we're on the last line, will be round number 10, as we then finish off this beautiful, beautiful flower. I've now come all the way back around, and now it's time to slip stitch, and I'm just going to slip it to the top here, this section. It's wonderful because, you know, when you go to look at the center project, you're never really going to know where you stopped and started because it's actually really quite amazing. And what we want to just do now is that we want to do a single crochet in the first. And so it says to use the front loops only. So again, front loops only, one single. And the next one is going to get the same thing that we've been doing all along is with a half double in the next, a double crochet in the same one, a double crochet in the same one and a half double and then we want to move along to a single crochet and then again half double double half 
single crochet and keep going all the way around and this motif will be classified as done and we'll just finish it off together and move along. So now I've come all the way back around and now it's time to slip stitch to where we started and we're just going to slip it. We don't want to slip it near the top, we want to maintain this petal so we want to slip down here so that both of the petals then will just align together properly. And what you can do, don't cut the string too short. I'd actually cut it about two feet long. And we're going to be using that same string then to use it to sew together to the top of the bag. So we just want to pull that out. Okay, and we just want to tie it in a nice knot, just something somewhere out of sight, out of, out of sight, out of mind, I guess you can say. Just tie it like that. And we just obviously want this to be on the inside, so just pull it through. Just slip in your hook from the bottom part, just pull it through so that it can slip back. And we're going to use that then to fasten it to the bag. So there your flower is then complete. And it actually is amazing, it's really quite nice. And uh, it's the same, so we did something right. So it's good. So let's get ready to assemble now. And what I want you to do is that I want you, we're going to actually seal now the bottom part together. And what I want you to do is I want you to look at your purse and actually see if there's a good side or a bad side to it. Um, I'm looking for the top seam here where I slip stitch, and I want that to be on an edge. So I'm going to fold this so that that stays on the edge up there and therefore it's not as noticeable when it's like that. What I want to do now is that I want to grab the main color which was the gray and I want to be able to fasten the bottom together so then that is our first step. So let's do that next. First of all let's create with the big crochet hook. I'm going to use a six and a half for this. I'm going to create a slip knot like we have been all along and I want to be able to slip stitch the bottom edges together just like that. So I just want to make sure it stays kind of flat when I'm picking it up and I want to just start out the one side here just right where it's coming together and I just want to slip in my hook on one side and on the other. Taking the material around just grabbing it and pulling it through there and through that slip knot. And we're going to slip knot ourselves all the way across this. I'm not going to show the entire thing obviously but we're just going to work to the next stitch over one side, grab the other, pulling it through and through. Okay, just keep moving along. So one side to the other. You can't really see the bottom anyway, so you can, you don't want to be sloppy about it, but you can be a little bit um, generous, I guess you can say. So let's just keep doing that all the way across, and when we meet back up on the other side, we'll, we'll finish that off, and you can see this is actually a really quick process. But it's a step that you want to do at the end so that you're aware of what is happening in the top part of the purse because you know you don't want a bad side facing anywhere that people are going to be able to notice and point it out on you. Now coming up to the very end of the same line that we're working at the bottom just so we've just been off camera just for a few minutes this is not a very lengthy process I want to go right to the end and uh, this is slip stitching is really causing a really beautiful nice seam down there so now that was the very last one I'm going to do so I'm going to take my Fancy Dancy Westcott scissors and I'm going to pull this string and I'm going to pull it through like that and tie it tight. So I'm going to just go to the, the stitch that I just came from, pulling it through. You slip, when you slip stitch it, it's always really tight, which is a good thing. Sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge, and I'm going to grab the string again, pulling it through. And this is just make sure, make sure, it, it does make sure that it's going to hold everything in a position. So now I just want to kind of hide the straggler in the stitches that are before this as well. And again, everything's really tight here. So. Again, everything's really tight here, so it's a little bit of a challenge to be able to, to get it in. We just want to make sure we're somewhat careful that we just don't want to be pulling strings 
just for the sake of pulling strings because you don't want to separate your plies and start wrecking your project. So let's trim this and voila the bottom piece is now done. So now let's move on and we're going to now do the flower next. So we're going to do the handles next. We should do the handles next and then the flower because the flower is the final touch. So let's review the handle area. You're going to notice that you cannot see the stitches that are used to hold this handle and that's because the stitches have been done on the inside that actually shows that is actually attached to the stitches on the inside of this that does not protrude through and you don't want to start going through because then you'll wreck the whole beautiful edge that you have here now the designers of Bernat they decided to go one and a half inches from the edge to the center point on both sides so that's what we're going to do here so grabbing your little ruler or actually let's grab a handle first and I want you to feed it onto like a, a darning needle so this is where those long pieces come into handy and you just put both of them through. And what we want to do is that we want to look for about one and a half inches. Nothing's ever exact. You can just look for it. Like that. And I'm looking at it. Okay, one and a half seems to be right here. So I'm going to be going in on the other side. Okay, and I'm going to go about maybe an inch or so down that and I want to come on the inside but I want to stay on the inside stitches so it doesn't protrude through. Okay and I'm going to go through a couple of strings there and I want to pull that through and pull that handle nice and close to it. So when I go to look at the other side you won't see it there because I'm on the inside of the stitches. So now it's up to me to fasten this handle down using the inside of these stitches. So I want to kind of go over top right onto the handle itself and then again just peel it back a little bit so you can see it and then just go through some more stitches that are the strings are on this side of the panel okay you want to be a little bit gentle you don't want to start reefing on anything and pulling things out of alignment and again just pulling it nice and tight into position so that's how you would uh, sew this in so I just want to keep working my way just going across making sure that I'm getting that handle you know you don't know what's going to be in a purse so you don't want to put anything in there that's going to be uh, too too heavy and wreck your purse so you're going to want to make sure that you have secured this nice and tight so keep going with that and I'll just show you how to cast that off and then I'll leave the rest for it, uh, you to do as well and then we'll do the flower next now that I have this all secured nice and tight you can see how tight that is and you can see that there's nowhere on the outside that you can see that this is the string that's protruding out and I just want to kind of go under some stitches that are on the actual handle itself I'm just going under and I want to just kind of tie the string in a knot so you can do that with all the remainder of these handles I would do uh, one side first and uh, I'd like to finish off this side before moving to the next and therefore you can just kind of really align it perfectly and just again just tying it nice and tight and then what I would just do just to make sure just put that straggler piece through so we know it's already tied so now we can just pull it through and then just tie and just cut this off nice and short and you'll never see it so that would be your step for doing your handles so there's the first handle and again we just want to match it to the other side and do that next so now it's time my handles are now on you could just see that the tension that I used uh, with the crochet is a little bit different and my bag is actually a little bit bigger than this one here so, but you know everybody's tension is different and if you're really tight it could actually be smaller than this one and that one so now it's time to apply our flower and we're just gonna do it here now looking at the sample do you remember how I had you leave on an extra piece you know it's the end and we're gonna use that same piece and we're just gonna attach it to the inside just like this okay and we're gonna stick it up so that it's just underneath the handle there so it's just part of it but then extending into the gray so we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna come up and we're gonna apply our darning needle to it so just again it's the string that is going to the flower itself and we're gonna start in the very top because we know then it's the very top and we're just gonna come in and we're just gonna just come underneath the handle just like so and we're gonna position this and we're just gonna go all the way around because this is red we can go on top of the flower and the inside without actually anybody knows noticing it at all so let's do that next okay so we're just gonna continue to pull it through 
nice and tight and we just want to get the top piece of there aligned to the top just like that and now from the other side I don't want to go too much on the inside here because I just don't want this red to be all over the place so if I'm going to jump any distances it should be on the flower side because it's matching the color and it doesn't matter which direction you want to start fastening it down with but I would just go just a you know just a smidgen over it's because you don't really want that red to be showing too much there coming in pulling it nice and tight and we want to come into the flower and again we just want to kind of nail that flower into position and so we're just going to grab it by piece and we're going to jump a significant jump here okay so we're going to just do a little piece here and then we're going to do a significant jump over there so then we can actually move the distance on the flower and not within the, the yellow so I just want to be on the yellow just for a smidgen again okay back out don't get your handle stuck in there and again I want to come into the flower again just on the underside I want to jump a significant distance and I do, I do want to measure it out so that's how you'll do that and then we'll finish up this project and we'll classify this as done for today so the inside of my flower okay it's all now attached and I want to just tie it off and I want to make sure I tie it off on the red side. I don't want to tie it off on the inside so that you see any knots hanging off of it. So I'm just going to just go around the flower on the inside there and I just want to tie a knot just near the edge but safe enough that it's not going to be showing when it's hanging off. Oops. Okay, and that is going to be it for this flower and now I'm just going to take this straggler now that I know it's tied off I'm going to take the straggler and I'm going to drag it on the inside of this flower okay see how I'm going all the way through just going to go on the inside like there just going to drag it through because now I know if I safely trim it in the center here whatever falls out is going to be underneath the flower instead and you'll never see it and there you go so that is the flower there completed. Well, here we have it. We are now complete. My purse over here, this is the designer's purse from Bernat.com. You can see that they're pretty well identical. Mine actually has a little bit of a shape to it, like almost like a, a V shape to it, where this one was more straight, and it could just be my tension and my hook. My handles were a lot longer as well, but my flower is smaller. So it just is interesting how your tension plays a factor when doing these projects. Either way, they're both good to go, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. On behalf of Bernat.com and the Crochet Crowd, I'm your host, Michael Selleck, wishing you a great day and wish you success with this project.